Hey, I'm Siobhan and welcome back to Finalysis. In this episode, we're going to be showcasing a new high scoring strategy and how teams can beat it. We'll be watching quarterfinals 4 from the Ignite Signature event in the Glacial Division. On the red alliance, we have team 937X and 2054V, and on the blue alliance, we have 334C and 10W. This match forced drivers to quickly react to fast changing scores and continuously fight for the long goals. However, the highlight of the match is in the last couple seconds, where we see the whole long goal taking control from the red alliance. So let's dive in and let us know your thoughts on Finalysis. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance and discover why so many Vex alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. Did you know that Fun has awesome merch options including game theme merch available at funroboticsnetwork.com slash merch? From cute thematic options to robots and fun themed apparel, you can directly support Fun and look good at the same time. You can also become a Fun member or supporter through YouTube Join to get early access to most of our content. Thank you for your continued support. So before we dive into our quarterfinals match, I want you to watch an example of how the strategy could work perfectly. For this match, just watch this robot down here, 2054V, who has a huge scoring capacity, upwards of 20 balls, and they use this perfectly to score all the balls in a long goal at the end of the match. So this means that regardless of if they're losing on other control zones, they're able to guarantee at least one goal full, which you'll see later on why that's pretty useful. So again, just, just watch this by here. And I want to give you a warning that the stream is a little, little bit laggy, so it might seem a little bit slow. Um, but these robots are moving pretty fast. Uh, so throughout the match, this robot down here is just loading up as many balls as possible. It looks like they have about 15 balls, and they just score a couple here, just to make sure they're able to get the controls. But as we skip ahead, you'll start to see that they're lining up and... Or sorry, I skipped back. But uh, you'll start to see that they're getting ready to score in this long hole. Now they already have the control zone here, but by scoring in this long goal, which they're doing here, remember that each block is worth 3 points. So for example, if they end up losing this long goal down here, all they need is 4 blocks on each, um, sorry, four blocks throughout the non-control zone part to guarantee pretty much the equal amount of points as a control zone is um, on the other long goal. So if they're able to get the control zone and 4 additional blocks, uh, they canceled out more than... Um, another long goal which is incredibly useful because it means you can pretty much focus on one long goal for the, the whole uh, driver control period of the match um, and that's exactly what they kind of do here they they have a kind of a fight down here for the long goal but you don't really have to worry about that if you're playing the strategy um, and you see here that the blue alliance is trying to get rid of all these balls there is a way to get rid of these balls which is pretty much just line up on this side of the goal and knock them out all this way but you're gonna need some momentum and some Good driver control so it's pretty hard but uh, but with how well this robot 2054 is able to hold onto the goal i think it's pretty impressive and it's pretty useful because they're able to literally fill up the whole entire goal which is more than two more sorry more than three control zones because they get this control zone bonus they're getting probably 15 balls or so which is more than all the long goals combined and it's also almost adding up for a middle goal so they're able to ignore the middle goal they're able to ignore uh the other long goal and they're able to pretty much just focus on this long goal and it worked out perfectly here they already they didn't even get the autonomous bonus but they're able to ignore that because um of this strategy which so far it seems pretty effective in terms of just working out the the mathematics uh, um of how well it's scoring uh you could see that if you're able to score more obviously it's um you're gonna end up in a more favorable favorable position and obviously at the beginning of the season we try most teams were kind of going for the strategy they were trying to score as many as they could but they were seeing that it's making it it was pretty easy to de-score more balls when you have more balls in the goal of course so uh the strategy works pretty well because if you're doing it at the last second it gives the opponent a lot less time to kind of de-score the balls um, but in this next match, in the quarterfinals match, we're going to see an example of how you can counter this strategy. So let's go right into this. This is the quarterfinals match um, of the Glacial Division at the Ignite Signature event. Um, so to introduce our teams, the robot that you just saw is 2050, uh, sorry, 2040, 2054V, uh, Pika Pika, and 937X, um, their alliance, Aurora. And then we have 10W on their opponent, and 334C, the alliance captain um, of the Blue Alliance. So we're going to start off auto. The 
autonomous periods for most of these uh, robots are pretty standard. Uh, 334C goes straight for the middle goal to make sure that they get that control bonus. Um, and on the top, both of these teams go straight to try and get that control zone with their wing. Um, I think it was a seven ball autonomous for both of them. So, or actually, this one only went for four balls, so that way they could get there earlier. Um, but it didn't end up working out for them anyway, because it looks like the Red Alliance has control. However, the Blue Alliance has control down here, and the Blue Alliance also has control of that long goal, or sorry, of that middle goal. So, I think um, it ends up being a Blue Alliance win. And if we skip ahead here, you'll see that the Blue Alliance comes out with that win. Um, but for the Red Alliance, if we just know their strategy, we know that the autonomous win shouldn't really matter to them because they're able, like I mentioned earlier, they're able to pretty much cancel that out by scoring upwards of 12 balls in that long goal, which is enough to cancel out another long goal, and all they really need is to get one of the middle goals or score some other points in some area. But really, um, their strategy on paper is really giving them a cushion in terms of where they're going to end up. So uh, most of the match is pretty standard. You're going to want to watch this big robot over here. Uh, a lot of the matches they're going to spend trying to load up. Uh, they're going to try and get 3-3-4-C uh, three, three, to spend as much time as they can on this long goal so that way uh, they might be able to do the middle goals and they might be able to get uh, as many balls in their little hopper system as possible. And 9-3-7-X on the other hand, they're just going to try and score as many points, guarantee, or sorry, try and get that control zone as best as they can because of course they want to get as many points as possible even if they they might not need it it's still going to help um in the end especially if the strategy doesn't work out and obviously the blue alliance um they know that what pika pika is going to do they know the strategy um is obviously pretty effective and they can see that pika pika is loading up uh pika pika goes straight into this parking zone which is a clear sign that they're going to try and pull off the strategy because they're going to try and intake as many balls as possible. And I think the strategy is also pretty effective because they're able to quickly go for these um, these middle goals uh, without having to kind of waste balls. Or they're wasting balls, but they're these balls, uh, they have so many extra which can immediately be scored in the long goal. So I think the strategy is really effective because throughout the season, I think we've been seeing um, effective driver control being always making sure making sure you're always having balls in your intake so with with having such high storage capacity and just making sure you're always having balls in your intake you're able to quickly go from the middle goals to the long goals and the long goals to the middle goals so uh, you're able to be very dynamic in your strategy and uh, in terms of how much you're scoring and where you're scoring um, and throughout the match I think blue holds a pretty dominating lead especially considering they have the autonomous bonus but red doing as best as they can um, to make sure that they get at least one of the control zones, giving them a little bit of a, bit of a cushion when they go into that end game period. And I think we can kind of predict that Pika Pika is going to go for the strategy um, around 20 to 15 seconds, giving them enough time to line up and make sure that, but it's still not enough time for 334C or uh, 10W to kind of descore. Um, but 334C, again, they know that the strategy is going to be pulled off. And you can even see on the drive team that uh, Pika Pika's drive team is pointing to that long goal. So they know that they want to get this long goal. They want to make sure that they have control. And they're scoring every ball. They're even de-scoring the balls um, from the blue lines just by scoring. And uh, 334C and 10W, they know this is happening. Um, and like I mentioned in that last match, in that round of 16, all you really need to do is de-score it from this side. And if you descore from this side, you're able to knock out most of the balls. And although you're not going to have any balls of your own in that long goal, especially in that control zone, at least you're getting rid of most of their balls. Because again, I think a lot of people don't realize is that the balls are worth three points each, which is a lot because all you need to do is score four balls just to um, equalize or even get more than a control zone. So um, you can literally not have the full control zone, but if you're scoring four on each side, you're going to get more than just a control zone which it's a little bit confusing but I think when you do when you work out the points it makes sense that you should still consider just the individual balls and um, unfortunately I think 334C tried to kind of descore these balls um, from this side of the goal but they weren't able to but for some reason and I think it's because Pika Pika saw that 334C was trying to descore um, they left the goal to try and play defense on them and because they left the goal 334C pulled off an amazing uh, driver control move, they uh, immediately descore and they get that control zone back, which is an intense moment in the last couple seconds. That It's two seconds left in this match. Um, and Pika Pika, they get the control zone back, but 
if you notice, their strategy didn't work out so well because look, they had the Blue Alliance has both of these middle goals, um, and they have a lot of balls in that bottom control zone, so it pretty much cancels out any balls that are in here. And they also have this long goal, so we can cross out this long goal in terms of control zone points uh, because it cancels out with this. In addition, the if if by any chance the Red Alliance has any extra balls, it gets cancelled out by the extra balls and the control zones um, of the middle goals. And also the Blue Alliance, again, they have the Autonomous. So just by working at the points, the Blue Alliance has a really striking lead. No matter whatever strategy happened with the Red Alliance, um, unfortunately they, they were countered immediately by 334C and 10W because 10W and 334C, they were able, able to predict exactly what would happen just because um, Pika Pika was loading up their hopper throughout the entire match. And I think, like we saw in that round of 16 match, um, it it's an effective strategy. It's very possible to pull it off um, very effectively because, especially throughout qualifications when opponent teams might not expect it. Um, however, as you enter the elimination rounds, teams are going to start scouting and teams are going to know um, exactly what's happening. And so... If you do any bit of scouting your or any bit of strategy before the match, you're able to coordinate with your alliance to basically who's going to prioritize defense or who's going to prioritize descoring the long goal. And I think just by knowing Pika Pika and knowing how well the strategy works, they obviously want to make sure that they're playing de they're, they're kind of protecting that long goal throughout the match. But um, I think just having any competent opponent will mean that the strategy is pretty susceptible to just counter counter strategies i guess so um i think what we're seeing is a little bit of a shift from earlier gameplay which we were seeing teams were scoring a lot less they were just trying to score in the control zones they were scoring about three balls and making sure that they were locking them down and i think this is a counter to that that kind of uh, strategy which which is just scoring few balls um however another counter to the to the i guess the counter strategy is just to anticipate that and to be ready to descore. and so it's getting a little bit confusing because we're seeing counter strategies and we're seeing a cycle back into what we're seeing at the beginning of the season which is just just scoring as much as you can um but we're also going to see a big reliance on how good these drivers are and i think these drivers, all, all four of these drivers in this match are incredible and they're able to anticipate exactly what's going to happen and they're able to quickly react um, to each move that the opponent makes. Um, so I don't think we're able to predict exactly what strategy is going to come up in these next couple months. I think we have a couple signatures left and we'll see exactly what's going to prevail. Um, but I don't think it's possible to predict it because we're seeing this strategy is pretty effective, but it also has counters and it has its flaws. Um, so I think it's really going to come down to who is the better driver and who has a better autonomous, which sets them up for driver control. And um, obviously that autonomous is, is going to matter because let's say we have a tie on middle goals. One team has the long goal or the low goal and one team has the upper middle goal. And then we have a tie on the long goals. And obviously it matters who has those lo those middle goals and those long goals. Um, but when it's tied up, it's going to come down to that autonomous bonus. So that's really where this game is headed. I also do think that people are starting to ignore the, the double part because of how important it is to keep those long goals. But at the end of the day, that double park is 22 points. So it's able to cancel out two long goal control zones. So it could really matter and it could benefit to kind of prioritize those double parts, especially if you could get it in the last two seconds uh, before any team can descore, but it also makes you kind of at risk to the strategy of just scoring a bunch at the end of the match. So it's a little bit of a trade-off depending on how much risk you want to place in the those last couple seconds, um, but I think depending on your robot strength, this robot strengths and your driver abilities, that's really where you're going to want to weigh out your options. Um, so in terms of what we're going to see at Worlds is just really high paced gameplay with a multitude of different strat strategies um, in terms of high scoring and low scoring matches, which were bo will, will both be equally competitive. In this match, the Blue Alliance identified a weakness in the Red Alliance's strong strategy to leverage the score in their favor in just the last couple seconds. 
Red Alliance attempted to score a whole long goal with the blocks by collecting them throughout the match, but it backfires as Blue is able to capitalize on the other control zones and ultimately de-score the majority of red blocks. This is a great example of the diversity of strategies this season and how dynamic teams must be to stay competitive. So let us know in the comments how you feel that Red Alliance could have gained a lead in the match with their scoring capacity. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Fun for more robotics related content. I'm Siobhan and thank you so much for watching Phenalysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu/vex.